Good morning, Ben. Yeah, I'm Eddie, come here. Yeah, Ben. Uh, what happened on the jib sheet? We uh, we let a line slip. We. Ben, there there isn't a hand aboard that isn't breathing salt spray for you, and I. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we're trying too hard. I don't know. What's that supposed to mean? How many trials do we have to lose before we stop blaming ourselves? You got an offer from Flying Cloud, is that it? Ben, they could give me the America's Cup from my own private cuspidor, and I still wouldn't sail for anybody else. But that doesn't change the way things are with this yacht, and we've got to make some changes, or we won't stand a chance. another one. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. Well, there's always tomorrow. And don't say that's the cry of the born loser or I'll hit you over the head with that trophy you won when you were 14. Come on, I'll fix your drink. Design. Transom, keel, step a new mast. Can we do all that with the final trials in two weeks? Uh, just have to go on double shifts. How are we going to pay for it? I notified the committee. I'm seeing Grant Mars at 10 in the morning. And miss the morning drill with your crew. Uh, hasn't been much fun lately, has it, Jen? It's been great fun. <coughs> You know what I think I'll do? I think I'll slink down to the dock some night and scuttle the Viking, and then I'll have you all to myself again. I had lunch with Marianne today. We talked about my getting a job at the television station. Did you, you talk to Marianne about that? Darling, she's not the only one who knows we have financial difficulties. Uh, that's my problem. I'll handle it, all right? But, darling, all it involves is a few hours in the morning to tape the noon show and two five-minute spots for no. the evening news. I am not going to have my wife spend a day smiling out of a television screen as the New England authority on society gossip, fish chowder, and... It's not a joke, Ben. I'm serious. Let's just drop it, shall we? Well, I have some pride, too, darling. How pleasant do you think it was for me this morning when I had to tell Albert and Mrs. Carr they'd have to wait still longer for their back salary? I have a prospect for one of the big boats we built last winter. I, I may even close the sale by the end of the week. That 60000 will pay for a lot of servants. Ben, you have been saying that for heaven knows how long. We're living hand to mouth these days. <sighs> Darling, I'm sorry. I love this house the way we live more than you do, if that's possible. And I care about the Randolph name, but we can't go on pretending. If we don't do something soon, by soon, I don't mean some comfortably vague tomorrow. If we don't do something now, today, make some decision, we're going to lose it all. The yacht company, this house, everything. Oh, she's a great boat. Now, if we win the America's Cup, everything will change. Those three boats in dry dock will sell like, like that. I have to put the men on double shifts just to take care of the new orders. Ben, you're not listening to me. Oh, honey. Honey, it'd take a lot more than the couple hundred dollars a week you might make from some television show to, to get the Viking back in that race. Is that all that matters? The Viking and the race? I just don't know how you could discuss our private affairs with Marianne. I have to talk to someone, Ben. <laughs> right with you. Make yourself comfortable. Thank you. Sorry, Ben. 
waiting long? No, not at all. How have you been? Oh, Marjorie, tell Maddox to go ahead. It's just the way we plan. Right. And, uh, Jennifer? Oh, we're both fine, Grant. Ben, I don't want to waste your time tiptoeing through the tulips on this. I've looked over your design sketches and the cost sheet. And... Uh, of course, that's just a rough estimate. I can get you the exact figures in a couple of days. Wouldn't do any good. They've made up their minds. But frankly, so have I. It just won't work, Ben. Well, I don't happen to agree with you. I don't expect you to. I know how much the Viking means to you. The flying cloud is newer and faster. You're just not going to beat her with $50,000 worth of modification. We have half a million dollars in the Viking. We can't just throw that away. Excuse me. Yes? All right, I'll be right there. Ben, I'm sorry to put it so bluntly. See you at the club. Redo again. He's in a bad way. Wants us to give him a 90-day note. Yeah, sure. The day I start wearing a red suit and a white beard and go ho, ho, ho. Billy, get me a Mitchell in L.A. Right. He's overcommitted, Nick. He can't get it anywhere else. Well, who is it? Long distance operator. Come on, Charlie. Take it easy. That's the only spine I got. Sorry, Mr. Carajanian. Shall we kiss him goodbye? Mr. Carajanian, sweet. You know, he's got that little hotel in Reno. Who's calling, operator? You know, if he's really in the corner, we could probably buy him out for a song. Hang him up until tomorrow. Who is it, Billy? A man named Randolph wants to speak to you. Benjamin Randolph. He's calling long distance from Newport, Rhode Island. Says he knows you're from Harvard. Thank you. Goodbye. Ben Randolph. And Mrs. Benjamin Randolph. You okay? I'll take it. Well, this can't be the Ben Randolph, the skipper himself. Uh, yes, yes, it is, Nick. Uh, how are you? Well, fine. And uh, how's our mutual friend, the skipper's wife? Jennifer's fine, thanks. Uh, it's been a long time, Nick. Nine years to be exact since I've seen you two lovely people. What's on your mind? Well, I want to talk to you about a business uh, proposition. I'm coming down to New York. Can we get together? Well, fine. How's 11 o'clock tomorrow morning? That's when you have the barber, Nick. Get my hotel suite and uh, give your wife my love. Fine. I'll uh, tell Jennifer you said hello. No, you do that. Hello, goodbye. And nine years later, who should come to me hat in hand? But the hubby, the one who got away. Town anyhow, I, I thought I'd drop by. You were gonna call me after you saw Grant. Oh, I'm sorry. We wanted to get her back into the yard today. We're gonna start work tomorrow. Ben, that's wonderful. Oh, I was so afraid they were gonna turn you down. All right, hold it. They did. Well, just because Grant and the others have lost their guts doesn't mean we have to give up. I may even decide on somebody outside the yachting clubs. Need some fresh blood. Well, do you have anyone in mind? Well, uh, a few weeks ago, I read an article in one of the yachting magazines about a few substantial Western businessmen have taken up racing. One of them's uh, an old friend of ours, Nick uh, Karajanian. He's, uh, he's in New York right now. He's made a fortune in real estate. There's a cover story on him in Business Index. Yeah. Ben, surely you're not seriously considering him. We, we haven't seen the man in years. 
Well, now, there's no reason not to consider him, is there? Don't be ridiculous. You know how awkward it would be. Now, how would you feel if I suddenly invited one of your old girlfriends to tea? You do it all the time. No, I know you're joking. No, I'm not. There's no other way, Jen. Things the way they are here at the yard, I... Well, I can't go to the bank. Well, we do have other friends besides Grant and his group. Do we? Then the last uh, couple of weeks, I have talked to most of our friends around the yacht club. Uh, all any of them want to talk about is what a great skipper my dad was. If I even hint that I'm looking for new investors for the Viking, they fade back into the wallpaper. Sure, old friends. I know how humiliating that must have been, but I'm sorry. You know, Nick may turn us down cold, but well, it's worth a try. After all, he needs us as much as we need him. He's made his money, now he's on the make for prestige and status. And he'll have it if he associates himself with the Randolph and the Viking. Please don't do it. Well, I've got no choice, Jen. Does my opinion matter to you? Well, of course it does. But honey, this is business. Now, come on, I'll walk you to the car. It's all right. You're busy. I'll see you at home. Piped aboard, Skipper, but the crew stole my bosun whistle. <laughs> Glad to see you again, Ben. Nick. Hey, I'd like you to meet my Ivy League mafia over there. That's Bill Tall, one of my attorneys. How do you do? Hello. I'm Lou Brady, my executive assistant. How do you do? And boys, this is a memory from long, long ago. Ben Randolph of the Rhode Island Randolphs. Well, did you happen to know that he's one of America's foremost yachtsmen? Sure, I read the papers. All right, Billy, why don't you fix the skipper a drink, huh? Uh, vodka and ice, fine. Impressive crew, huh, skipper? Yeah. Cutthroats, one and all. Pirates with pedigrees. Oh, and this gentleman behind me is one of New York's foremost hairstylists. Did you know that I'm one of the few men that pay $25 a week just to have gray put into my hair? I learned long ago that it gives New York bankers confidence, especially when you're younger than they are and come from the West. It's an angle I never thought of. Well, you never had to think of the angles. You had the name, Randolph. Uh, Nick, uh, could we, uh, be together for a couple of minutes yeah, alone? I wanted to talk to you. Oh, we're all together here, Benjamin. Feel free to discuss anything. Long distance sits in your Las Vegas office. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Guy in here. Who? No, look, when I say Wednesday, I don't mean next week. No, no flexibility on this one, Andy. All right, you have him call me right away. Good. Operator? Would you hold this line open for me? I'm expecting another long-distance call. Skip, I bet you don't know this, but I remember when you used to come to this hotel to have lunch with your father, the old Commodore. Mm -hmm. You were just a skinny kid with a yachting cap, and right off a of Long Island Sound with some trophy. And me, I was just a dish buster. I had to clean up your mess after you went back to the beach. But I always used to steal a quarter off your father's tip. The waiters never caught on. And that's how the old grad subsidized my first year at Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happened to you lately? Lost your touch with the big white sheets? I've been following you in Viking. You've been having some lousy luck. What's wrong? Oh, I'm all right. I'm uh, making some design changes before the final trials. Actually, Nick, that's uh, what I wanted to talk... Oh, excuse me. Sorry, Jenny, here. Oh, yeah, Steve. Look, I love you dearly, but don't... Don't you ever give my man any bunk about the delivery days, and I mean that. Yeah, I'm saying. All right, and don't say I didn't warn you. And, uh, don't ever trust an Irish Armenian. The Irishman in Australia, girl, and the Armenian in your wallet. Right? <laughs> yeah. Now, what can I do for you? I read that article in the yachting magazine. Were you serious when you said someday you'd like to race for the America's Cup? Sure. Maybe in a couple of years, I'll put together a syndicate of Western yachtsmen and show you Eastern boys how to do it, huh? Frankly, I'm uh, looking for a new partner on the Viking. I need additional financing. Mm -hmm. Those uh, changes I mentioned, uh, if you're at all interested, I have the uh, sketches and the cost estimate right here. Is this Jennifer's idea? 
No, of course not. Well, how much do you want? Oh, it'd be about, uh, a hundred thousand. Well, Skipper, I have to admit you have your own style. Here, I haven't seen you in nearly a decade, and you hit me up for a small fortune. How about that, boys? The son of an Armenian peddler and an Irish scrubwoman, racing the America's Cup. It's your money, Nick. But uh, we've got better places for it. You know, I might just be interested, man. I'm looking for an eastern site for a new project. I thought I might take a hike up the coast. Maybe I'll drop in on you two lovely people tomorrow. So why don't you tell your wife to throw another potato in the pot? I'm sure she'd love having an old boat at dinner, aren't you? We'd uh, be delighted to have you, Nick. Nick, you look marvelous. So nice to see you again. I was... Uh... Just making a drink. What do we have, Nick? Oh, whatever you're having will be fine. You know, if you had a hot dog in one hand and a pom-pom in the other, I might recognize you. Have I changed that much? You wouldn't try to intimidate me with that cool smile, would you, Mrs. Randall? How are you, Jennifer? Just fine. No point in asking how you are. You've arrived. You wouldn't have popped out of two or three magazines in the last month. Well, I have a very hungry press agent. <laughs> we're really so happy for you, Nick. And we're delighted you're interested in the Viking. Well, that calls for a toast, don't you think? Mm, to you, Nick. Uh... And to the Viking. Uh, you know, that name is sort of old hat, isn't it? I mean, we ought to change the name. And after all, a yacht is a woman. Swift, beautiful. Unpredictable as the wind. Uh, that's one of my conditions if I come in. We change our luck. Celebrate her for what she is. The princess. To the princess. We're having a slow year this year because we've devoted so much time to the race, but uh, well, we have great potential here. All we need is the publicity push from the American Cup, and we'll be back at full capacity again. Well, you'll never make a profit with this operation. You've got too much unused real estate and not enough production. You've got to get into the cheaper materials, you know, fiberglasses, synthetics. Set up a line, you know, simplify your operation, produce in quantity. Well, there are other businesses doing just that, Nick. That just doesn't happen to be our kind of business. Mr. Randolph builds the finest boats money can buy. Oh, come on, boys. Where do you think you are? Back in the 19th century with dear old great-granddad building the fastest clipper ships ever to sail around the Horn all by hand? There's still a great demand for quality, craftsmanship. Ben and I would like to talk business. Ben, I, I'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll pick it up later, Ed. Okay? All right, Ben. I'd have to have 50% of Randolph Yacht Company. <laughs> well, the, uh, the business is a family trust. I couldn't do that. Well, don't give me that song and dance about five generations. I don't care how old the business is, or your house, or your tuxedo. I wouldn't even consider this yachting lark if I couldn't write it off the taxes. 
Well, I'll have to uh, think about it. What's to think about? If you don't like the idea, just tell me to shove off. That's what you'd like to do, isn't it? Is business over? Just about, Princess. When Karajanian goes into something, he's got to make sure he's riding a winner. I'll have to see him in the water first. Well, though he's stripping weight off for keel, I've got to test it before we go ahead with the major changes. You're welcome to sail with us tomorrow. Ben's the best skipper anywhere, and he's a fine designer. If he says those changes will make her a winner, they will. You say so, Princess? That's the way it is. Okay. Let's give it the first round of the Randolphs. Come on, I'll drive you home. Goodbye. Bye. See you later, Frank. Come on, I want to show you something. Come on. Well, why'd you bring me up here? Remember how I used to take you up to the top of the stadium? I liked it up there. That was the only place I could look down on all of them. Nick, I have to get home. Oh, what do you have to do? I mean, cut flowers in your garden, discuss tomorrow's menu with the cook? Play mistress of the manor? Is that more important than being up here on top of the world with me? Nick, you may not think what I do is important. You might miss a great moment. You'd be the only witness. Karajanian conceives a new universe. You don't believe me, do you? You know, four years ago, I walked out into the desert. I had a vision. I saw it rise right out of the sand and cactus. A new kind of a city. My city. Without ugliness and dirt. A place where the average Joe could live like a king. And who knows? I might just build another kingdom right here. If Karajanian says it comes to life, it comes to life. Go ahead, smile. I want to see you smile. And I want to hear you say to yourself, ah, there's my Nick. Drunk again with dreams. Weaving words around my head like a mad saucer, leaving back into my life like a genie. You see, I know your secret. You rub your magic lamp, and here I am. I lost my magic lamp a long time ago, Nick. All I have is a marriage. That's all I need. That's nice. I've watched you with him. The way you cut at him with words, jab at him with your cleverness, try to shake his pride. I don't want that to go on. You're a good wife, Mrs. Randolph. I like that because there wouldn't be any point to it if you turned out to be a tramp. Why don't you go away, Nick? Leave us alone. Don't try to punish Ben for something I did to you. Your hands are cold. I'm all right. Then why are you trembling? I said I'm all right. There's nothing to be afraid of. All I'm going to do is kiss you goodbye. Go on, say it. 
say hello, Nick, hello, love, and where do we go from here? With that let out, she really moves. All I know is this pile of firewood and old bed sheets, and it cost me 100,000 clams just so I can say I race for the America's Cup, huh? Ah, then you're with us all the way? Ben, we'd better wash down the main so we caught a lot of spray. Uh, back to the yard tomorrow, Ed. We're going to have with the whole thing crash program, 16 hours a day. <laughs> Wait till my wife hears that. Ben, I think you ought to make your crew changes now. The crew is set. Oh? What about that foul up in the spinnaker halyard? We were a little over anxious today. What'd you expect after a layoff? You know, Eddie, you make a great yard foreman. But I think we need somebody younger to really push this crew. And who made you skipper? I want him off the crew, Ben. It's as simple as that. Ben, are you gonna let this kibitzer run your boat? All right, now take it easy, Ed. All right, Ben. Whatever you say. Eddie! You get rid of old Ed, and I'm in, partner. All the way with the princess. between you and Eddie. Well, uh, Nick wants him off the boat. Eddie made the mistake of disagreeing with him. What are you going to do? Nothing. But, Ben... Well, let's just drop it, huh? Ben, darling, don't you see what he's trying to do to you? He won't be satisfied until he has you crawling to him. Well, I've done my crawling for him. He's going to give me a check tomorrow, and he'll be gone. Well, Jen, it's almost over. Ben, it's not over. There's only one way to end it. That's telling we don't want the money. Tell him to go away. I can't do that. I mean, there's no point. There is a point. Our marriage is the point. It can't stand anymore of Nick Karajanian. Well, if it can, it isn't very strong, is it? Is that why you brought Nick here? To test me? To test our marriage? Yeah. No, I brought him here to help, to help to win this race. Because that is my life. It all hangs on that... that silver loving cup. And what if I told you that Nick wants me? And that silver loving cup is his price? Do you still want it so badly? What are you saying? I'm not interested in whether Nick wants you. Do you want him? Do you want him? Ben, don't you understand? You're forcing the question. Yes, yes, I am. I, don't you think I deserve an answer? Well, I'm here. I've been here for nine years. Isn't that an answer? No, oh, no, no, that's not an answer. I'm not talking about the last nine years. I'm talking about now. Now, do you want him? You're not sure, are you? You expect me to send him away and take his money with him and then for me to declare my undying love for you, and you're not sure. 
I'll tell you something. I, I don't think you have ever, ever been sure. I think you have always wanted him. That's a lie. That's not true, Ben. It's not true at all. Oh, isn't it? Ben, I was yours. I, I never even thought of Nick for years and years, but lately I don't know where I am with you anymore. I reach out, I try to touch you, and, and you're not there. You're, you're somewhere way out in the past or way out in the future, but you're never here. You never let me know you're here where you can touch me or, or make me sad or make me happy or give me a child or something. It's always wait. It's always wait a little bit longer. Everything will be all right. The, the company will be out of the red, and we'll win the race, and there'll be a boy for you, and a girl for me, and life will be perfect. Oh, Ben. Ben, I don't expect life to be perfect anymore. And I don't want to wait anymore. I want to live now, not tomorrow. I've got to win, don't you understand? I've got to win that race. When I step off that boat, I'm lost. That day you brought me home like a stray cat. That was the first time I ever got a look at your world. That magnificent house. And your father like some old Kentucky colonel lost in the frozen north. In the garden. We'll never forget that garden, will we? Green gravel, green gravel. Your grass is so green. The fairest young damsel that ever was seen. I'll wash you in milk and dress you in silk and write down your name in a golden flame. Once upon a time, there was a girl who said, isn't it a shame that poor Nicholas never had a childhood? But he was born at the age of 21 with the look of an eagle in his eye. She wanted to see him laugh like a little boy. So she took him into her garden and taught him a child's game. He still remembers it. He remembers all the games. Jenny over the water. Jenny over the sea. Jenny, catch a bluebird. Can't catch me. You're still at Princess. over the water, Nicholas over the sea, Nicholas catch a bluebird, can't catch me.
carpet, you shall kneel. While the grass grows in the field. Stand up, stand up, stand up on your feet. And choose the one you love so sweet. Please. Now you're married, love and joy. First a girl and then a boy. Nine years oh, later, man. nine years ago, now's the time to bow and go. Bow and go. Hasn't changed, has it? Just like the first time, all over again. Now I look at you, and those nine years never happened. Well, it can't be. But why can't it be? Because I'm married. Marriage happens to mean something to me. You're lying to yourself again. You know, you always had a marvelous talent for lying to yourself. Please leave me alone. The funny thing is how you ever got mixed up with a mongrel, a stray, a grind who used to wait on tables at the university dining room. Not nearly good enough for a princess who wanted more than any man could ever give her. A princess haunted by a coupon clipping dad that lost his wallet in the stock market and spent the rest of his life dying like a gentleman. And you swore to yourself then that that would never happen to you that you would marry a man who would give you everything. And has he given you everything? Everything you want? No one gets everything they want, Nick. I know you. Princess high in the stone tower, waiting for the prince to come riding along and carry her away to the golden future. Only you made one mistake. You rode off with the wrong prince. No. No. Why are both of you dying in this tomb? Why is your life so empty? Why didn't he give you a child? I'm sorry. I forgot, princesses don't have babies. That's pain. That's life. That's not part of the fairy tale. Is that why you came here? To hurt me? Yes! To take your life in my hands and twist it. And then turn my back on you and walk away. That's the way I wanted it to end. But there is no end for us. You'll leave him now. Come to New York with me and my attorneys will arrange the divorce. He has nothing else to offer you. Even if he wins the race, what's that mean? He's got nothing. He has me. He never had you. And he knows it. He'll forget you with her, the yacht. He'll have what he wants. And you, Nick, will you have everything you want? The princess. You. Always. You want me. You know you do. Check. You go upstairs and throw some things in the suitcase. He's kept you in his glass bottle like something beautiful from long, long ago. You've got a right to live now, Jim. 
now. Maybe you didn't read this very well, Ben. It says $100,000 from me to you. I know. And you're willing to blow it all because of an employee? He is also a friend. Then he will understand. Eddie has worked for me for 15 years. His father worked for my father. Look, Ben, this is a business, not a home for old sailors. You got a half a million bucks tied up in the princess. And you're going to blow that because of sentiment? You don't understand that, do you? Sure. I also know a fool when I see one. The skipper here is about to give up yachting. You better tell him that he needs that check or he's going to lose the race, his boat, the yard, his house, and everything in it. Everything? Everything. I suppose that's what I've been asking for. Oh, you inheritors of money. You don't know how to stand up and fight for what you want. That may be, but I don't like your terms. I am out of the race. Bravo. Well, Princess, I tried to save him. But he wouldn't save. You did that because of Eddie? Mm-hmm. And because of you. Suppose I told you that Princess was leaving with me tonight. Would that change your mind? No. Are you? I've thought of it. I see. I don't know if it'll make any difference, but I don't want you to go. I love you, Jen. It's always been very hard for me to say that because, well, I kept remembering that you really belonged to Nick. I couldn't forget that because you couldn't forget it. But I don't give a damn about that or anything else now. I want you and I want you to know it. And even if you still decide to go with him, at least you'll know. Well, we're really having a clearance sale tonight, aren't we? Truth is dirt cheap. Come on, Princess, it's time to leave. I'm not going with you, Nick. Are you sure, Jen? You're not doing this because you think I need you. Oh, no, Ben. Because I need you. Wow! This is the boomerang of all times. Well, I hope you two don't mind if I don't stick around to watch you sail off in the sunset together. Because I'd be afraid to see what happened when the sun came up tomorrow. Well, she's all yours, Skipper. And I wish you good luck. Jenny over the water. Jenny over the sea. Jenny catch a bluebird. Can't catch me. He was right about tomorrow. It will be different. But I'm gonna try to make this place work. But I also know may all have to go. Does that matter? Maybe that's where I failed you by... by making you think that our, our marriage needed all these trappings to stay alive. By... by not letting you be sure of me because I... I wasn't sure of myself. And most of all... I wanted to be safe. No one can ever really be safe. Let's go home.